What is going on everyone? So when I did my Gear Sport review, I set it up using my iPhone because that's what I own and I use every day. But I kind of felt like the experience was a little bit incomplete. And then I set it up with an Android phone and that definitely confirmed my feelings that there are a few things missing from the iOS experience. So in this video, I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison with both devices so that you can see exactly what you may get with one versus another. Now, this isn't all Apple's fault, nor is it all Samsung's fault, because there are definitely some things that Samsung can improve on, but there are just certain limitations trying to exist in Apple's rather closed off ecosystem. So these comparisons are essentially gonna be straight out of the box with fresh firmware resets with both devices. I'm not gonna dive into the core functionality to watch, but check out my Gear Sport review for more details. But let's start with the widgets, which are actually very similar between both devices. The first widget you're gonna get is gonna be the calories burned, then you're gonna get steps, then floors climbed, a heart rate widget, the exercise widget, which by the way, there are no differences in the available stock workout profiles, then the quick access workout widget, the weather widget, which I didn't set up a location in iOS, but it does work exactly the same, the music player widget, then on Android, it automatically installs the calendar widget, but this app and widget is available on iOS, so that was kind of an interesting decision. Then both of them get the create reminder widget, and then finally you can add more widgets. And then this is pretty much where the similarities end. Now let's dive into the apps, and this is where you'll start to see some major differences, even with the first three available apps, which are the text messages, phone functionality, and then contacts. And don't worry, I'll go over these three in detail with the notifications once we go through all the available apps. But then we'll have Samsung Health on both, which have the same functionality. Then on Android, you'll get Samsung Pay, the Galaxy App Store, the Music Player, which is also similar, as well as Settings. And then you can already see here that we're onto the second page of apps for Android, where we're only halfway through the first page on iOS. Next, you'll have Reminders, which are the same between the two. Then S Voice, which is basically useless on an iPhone, was pretty slow and not even that responsive paired to an Android phone. Then the Weather app, the Calendar app, Alarms, World Clock, and Photo Gallery, which are all basically the same. And then on Android, you'll get Email. And then on both, you'll get Flipboard News Briefing. Then Find My Phone on Android only. And then finally, the Alti Barometer and the PowerPoint Controller on both of them. Now let's go over the notifications and what you can do on one versus the other. With the iPhone, you'll get one-way notifications that you can clear. That's it. But this is the same sort of functionality that you can expect with any non-Apple Watch, so this is in no way Samsung's fault. But paired with an Android phone, you'll be able to reply to text, emails, as well as make and take calls on the device. For text messages, you'll be able to see a thread of the messages, and then for replying, they provide a quick shortcut to use S Voice to dictate the message or send emojis, or you can see all the interface options, the first of which is writing text by hand, using the surprisingly very good keyboard, number pad, and special character interface, and then they also have the emojis and voice dictation in this menu as well. But you'll also have some predefined canned responses to choose from, but you can also edit these responses and add your own. Lastly, you can draw a doodle, which looks like this on a recipient's phone. For email, functionality will be nearly exactly the same as text with voice dictation, emojis, writing text by hand, all the keyboards, canned responses, and the only thing that's gonna be different is the inability to draw doodles. And then for calls, you can use the number pad to manually type in a number, choose from your contacts list, and you'll be provided a list of recent calls along with the times that the person called. You could then call them back or write them a message from this screen. So those are the differences on the watch itself, but that is only half of the story because now let's look at the Samsung Gear as well as Samsung Health smartphone apps as well as third-party app compatibility. On both phones, you'll use Samsung Gear to manage the device and then Samsung Health to manage your personal data. On the Samsung Gear app, the first difference is going to be that on Android, you'll set up Samsung Pay from the Gear app itself. Settings for the Gear Sport watch will also be different between the two, where on iOS, you'll be able to manage notifications, manage apps, the Gear Music Manager, Find My Gear, and then transferring photos to the watch. But on Android, you'll be provided quite a bit more where you can manage watch faces as well as customize them, where on iOS, all you can do is uninstall them. You'll also get notifications with Smart Relay, and then you can also transfer music to your gear directly from the app if it's loaded on your phone. You can also send SOS requests and then manage your quick replies. 
Now for the third party apps. So a big part of the Gear Sport announcement was the partnership with Under Armour and Speedo for more robust dedicated fitness apps. But if you're on an iPhone, you're not going to get those. They simply are not there and all they do is provide some pared down options like Map My Run. I'll have some follow up reviews of the Under Armour Record as well as the Speedo on app so subscribe to the channel and get notifications when those videos come out. Another huge difference is that there's going to be no paid premium apps available on the iPhone. As an example, looking through the watch faces, you can see here that there are a ton of paid watch faces that you can get when you use an Android phone, which are not on iOS, and the same can be said for games and other categories. As for Samsung Health, again, it's going to be a bit different. From the top, you'll have access to exercise programs, direct access to partner apps, accessory devices, and just to note, these are accessories that can be paired to your phone, not the watch itself, which only pairs with Bluetooth headphones, at least at the time of this filming. And then you'll get promotions and then settings. And then within settings, this is where I can answer the inevitable what about Strava question. On Android, you'll get a connected services menu option where you can connect to Strava as well as other services like Fitbit, Runkeeper, and a few more. This is definitely a major disappointment. This is absolutely something that can be added to iOS. Within the app, you'll also get the experts tab if you want to use an online doctor and a discover tab, which is basically a newsfeed. The rest of the individual tiles seem to have similar functionality. And lastly, it does not appear that you can pair the Gear Sport to two phones concurrently. It simply resets a device. So to wrap things up, this isn't all Apple's fault and there are clearly some things that Samsung can improve on here. There are some glaring omissions to some features in iOS and it's not just that Apple doesn't allow it. Text messages, calls, and emails, I can totally understand. No worries there. But the Under Armour Record, Speedo app, as well as the third-party service integration like Strava, ah, those are features that are not platform dependent. And I know at least a portion of those are possible. So if this is being done intentionally to try to get people to buy more Samsung phones, I think that's a pretty poor business decision as Samsung is in no way gonna sway people away from their iPhones if that's what they already like and they love. And I'm not trying to start an iPhone versus Android debate here. All I'm saying is that people like what they like, so don't put a bad taste in their mouth with a poor experience. So Samsung made a point to have iOS compatibility as a marketing point for the Gear Sport. So it should not only be compatible, but should actually provide the nearly the exact same experience between both devices, which unfortunately it does not. So the great thing about all of this is that Samsung still has an opportunity here because everything that I mentioned is all software related. So beef up the experience on iOS and sell even more of these watches because honestly, this is one of my favorite watches to test in 2017 and I absolutely loved it. But my primary phone's an iPhone, so unfortunately I can't even consider it as a back device alternative to my Garmin, mainly because of the Strava integration. So let me know your thoughts or if you've had the same experience on an iPhone and while you're down there, smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for a review of the Under Armour Record and Speedo on app for Android, of course, coming soon. Thanks for watching.